I want you to tell me first a little about, about what you do, about why you do it, and about what's different behind us from what we've done earlier today. The state works more with uh, recreational fish. We're trying to put fish in the water for people to catch. The federal hatchery, their focus is more on threatening endangered species. But we work together. What we were doing earlier this morning was channel catfish. These are bluegill, and uh, they're not only a recreational fish, but they're one of the uh, prey. Endangered. Well, no, these are these are real common. These are prey fish for like larger catfish, bass, things like that. We use these to stock bodies of water that, that are new or like hurricane impacted areas that, that, that have the fish populations destroyed. All right, so Dr. Glebe, what brought you down here from Canada? I'm down here to, to learn how to culture alligator gar. And you might think this is a bit strange because we don't have alligator gar in Canada, but we have a related right. species called the spotted gar which the government has declared uh, endangered. So to keep it from going extinct, we hope to raise uh, that species of gar under the same conditions as the alligator gar to enhance the wild populations. I know these are some gar right here. What are we doing? These are gar that I raised here from eggs. And I'm gonna let you uh, handle these. I'm, I'm gonna provide you with a, a wire mesh glove. Okay. This is the same material that's uh, used in the scuba suits. Uh, when divers swim with sharks, it protects them from injury. It's to pre oh. prevent you from, from being lacerated because alligator gar lacerated. have quite well-developed teeth at this stage, probably a quarter of an inch long or more. And they have not two rows, but they have four rows of teeth in their mouth. So you, so you I want, want me you to put my hand in there? I, I want you to put your hand in. I will supervise from a distance. This will, be a new ex this will be a new experience. The only risk is maybe a few lacerations, a few stitches, that's all. Now they're not going to snap at me, are they? No. Nope. Uh, Hopefully not. Just, you have to grab them by the head. But pick up the biggest one because that's the most Slippery. <laughs> this is actually a lot harder than it looks. Wow, this guy's got strong, 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 strong. Look at the size of the teeth in that one. So they swallow their food whole? They sw swallow it whole, yeah. Wow, whoa. Don't forget, these are raised from eggs. They're only five months old. They are the fast, in my history of raising fish for 30, in 30 years, I've never seen fish that can grow as fast as the alligator gar. And remember, very these are very primitive fish. They've been on the planet unchanged for over 100 million years. They are older than the dinosaurs. All right, I'm here with Ms. Karen Kilpatrick at the National Fish Hatchery down in Natchitoches. Now, Ms. Karen, I thought this was a fish hatchery. What are we doing with turtles today? Well, we are trying to help restore their populations, but the reason that they're here in addition to fish is the, the hatchery is really just here to protect species that need help and to give them a jump start that they wouldn't have out in nature. What kind of turtles are these? These are alligator snapping turtles. So and they bite? They bite. Now these and are little guys that we're working with today, so they, if they bite it won't hurt too much, but the big guys, they would take your fingers off. Okay, so I, okay, I don't have to be too, too worried today. Though. No, not too worried. All right, okay, so what are we doing? Well, first thing we want to show is that what the turtles look like. These are young hatchlings that just hatched out in August, and we're working with them in conjunction with a refuge to try to hatch these guys out and restock them back on the refuge because their populations are in decline from raccoons robbing the nests and also from fire ants. Overall, they're in a huge decline in the southeast. Just for anybody curious, how big can these guys get? These guys can get to be, the biggest one I've seen is 240 pounds, and that's about pounds. this big, and the head is about the size of a football. It's like a high school lineman how much he weighs. Wow. Yeah, they, they can be pretty monstrous. What are we doing with this right here? Well, one of the things that we're doing with this batch of turtles in particular is we are trying to learn how to mark them so that when we get them up to a bigger size out in the wild, we can go trace them and we can follow them and see how they do out in the wild. We like to do what we call pit tag them. And we have these little microchip and we put it in a needle like this. He's already marked. Okay. Pull his little leg out. They're not happy when you do this not fun for the turtle. And then you put that, you, you would take your needle and you would inject it in here just below the skin. So we're not gonna do it, but you would inject that tag into his body. And what we're trying to find out is, does it have any effect on the turtle's growth rate? And 
do they lose that pit tag over a period of time? Right. And why don't you read the pit tag? Okay. Just hold it next to him. One, four, four, so on and so forth. It goes on. So we know who this turtle is. That makes this turtle unique. And so for however many years he's trackable out in the wild and for the data that we want to collect here, we know that information about that turtle. Next, I want you to go ahead and weigh him and get a measurement on him. All right. And I'll record the data. Okay. There's really not a lot known about their life history. And so that's one of the things that we're looking at. And there's just a lot of really cool information we need to find out. And that's why we do what we do. All right, well, we've done a lot today. We caught some fish, we released some fish, we hung out with some turtles for a while, and the whole time we got wet while we were doing it. I'd like to thank this gentleman from the federal and state levels of the Natchitoches Fish Hatchery. And until next time, keep it wet! <laughs>